Hi, uh, welcome back and uh, thanks for uh, taking the time to view my uh, blog posts. And so this week I'm revisiting the Swarm Show down at Hamilton Artist Inc. It's up, uh, it's in the final days before Christmas and it goes for another week in January after the, the gallery reopens in, in January. And I think the January 13th is the last date. So I wanted to go back and take a closer look without people around to kind of get a sense of how my work stacks up against everyone else. Um, it's an unfortunate reality that we all compare ourselves to other people, no matter how much we know it's unhealthy and um, counterproductive to developing your own style. But at the end of the day, uh, when someone comes into a gallery to buy a painting, you are being compared with the other people in the area or within the gallery. So it is a, a, a truism. And it was an interesting show for the range of uh, uh, material that had uh, been produced this year. It's always interesting to see what everyone else is doing. And everyone else right now is on the bandwagon of figuratism uh, and portrait painting so I'm not uh, uh, unusual in that respect so let's uh, start the um, uh, video here so again we're down on James Street uh, North and I'm just walking down to the gallery uh, to, again this was I think last Thursday or uh, Wednesday or Thursday last week I think Thursday so here's a quick pan of the gallery, as you can see, uh, a little bit more vacant. That was the uh, young lady in the gallery, and uh, I, she did pose a little bit of problems as far as trying to film around her so that I didn't keep getting her in the, in the video. I uh, wanted to sort of respect her privacy. So here's a quick scan. There's a quick glance at my piece. Uh, there are a lot of uh, interesting pieces along this wall. Um, there's also this piece I found also very interesting. I will come back to it. And then we scan along the other wall. And uh, as you can see, there's some abstracts here. Some um, fabric, uh, a piece on mylar, which I'll come back to. Uh, then we, uh, as you can see, there's a, a range of subject matter, some portraits, some uh, still life, some landscapes or um, farm settings. Here's our video piece. Um, I do not understand why it was placed so low. Made it very difficult to view Derek's uh, work. Uh, normally you, I've seen this either mounted on the wall or on a pedestal. Maybe that was the intent, I don't know. No. This piece was uh, interesting. I thought she did a very good job and um, uh, does a lot of this stuff. I uh, looked at her website, uh, she's quite good. There's uh, um, this uh, portrait of, uh, three quarters portrait was uh, interesting and uh, uh, quite skilled actually. Uh, there's Paul, Paul Alice at the top there, uh, his uh, photographic, uh, landscape. He does a series of uh, uh, photos and stretches out the landscape. Uh, this one is of the uh, of the bridge uh, in the Hamilton Harbor, but um, he uh, does usually uh, street landscapes, which is he's well known for. He actually has his own gallery, so he's been doing it quite well. And then this is in the front room uh, by the uh, by Jane Street. Uh, there was quite a, no, a varied uh, number of works here, some fabric, um, collage, and uh, sculptures as well. Um, and as we can see, uh, this one here was interesting. I didn't really get too much time to it, but, and then the one up uh, with the um, swan or um, I forget what, the herring, uh, drew a lot of comment from uh, gallery goers. It's uh, uh, an interesting uh, uh, approach to his art. I think that, I uh, can't remember if that's, uh, I can't remember the artist's name at the moment. I'll have it on underneath here. So we're back in the other room and we're just uh, again scanning around. 
uh, the pieces. I'll try to take a quick closer look at it. Now this piece here, this large piece here, I really thought was quite good. I think it's of the Royal Botanical Gardens. I'll focus on it in a second. Um, a very, um, a very detailed work. Uh, uh, can't be scanned too quickly uh, to to read, which is always a problem with paintings and a problem with mine. Um, I don't. Uh, he put ten thousand dollars if I was reading them, so obviously he didn't want to sell, but he was going to take down a small ransom meter if it was offered. So there was nice, some interesting pieces on this wall. I, I actually like this, uh, this, this piece. Very, uh, very good use of color. Um, subject matter wasn't to my taste, but I really appreciated his, uh, the, 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 the painting and the, the structure of the composition. It was uh, quite nice. We have a, 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 I think that's print. And here, of course, is my masterpiece. Uh, too illustrative. Um, that was me think. This is a very good portrait. I, I did these two top pieces actually were very, I actually liked them quite a bit. Now this is probably one of the most polished pieces in the in the show. Um, quite uh, it wasn't for sale. I guess he does prints. He sells for print, sells prints of it, which is understandable. It must have taken them him or her a huge amount of time to do that. That is fairly detailed, sophisticated work, no sign of brushstroke whatsoever. This is one of the pieces I thought was almost a print because it was so, if you look at the map in the background, he, uh, quite a bit. He loses it a little bit on the, uh, the uh, perspective there on, uh, on the legs, but uh, it's an amazing piece. And then we come to the other two very interesting pieces at the end. This, one is myth, um, mythology. I'm sure this is done from models, from live models. Uh, uh, it was, um, it's uh, quite a good uh, piece, quite a, um, a little elaborate. It, I'm not that cre crazy about the mythology aspect of it, but it was, um, it was pretty good. Now, Kevin had the single sale in the show at this point and sort of a renaissance uh, motif uh, meeting Mighty Python, maybe. Uh, now, this was my favorite piece. This really was, she's quite quite original. I really, it doesn't show as much here, but the brush strokes in that is on Mylar. I've worked with Mylar in Plast. It's uh, basically a plastic sheet. Very good brush strokes. She does, this is uh, a series of stuff that deals with uh, beach scenes and uh, she generally works with landscapes with some kind of figure or, or, or structure in the in the in the view. Um, I was very impressed by this. I, I wasn't crazy about the mylar, but the uh, the the sign of brushstrokes and mark making was really quite impressive. I, I liked her. That I thought hers was a standout in the show. Now I looked at her uh, website and her other pieces are a little bit more dull at least as how it comes across the color wise comes across on the on the computer which may not be fair and this one uh, it just glowed off the wall like it really the selection of the use of colors and the brush strokes was quite quite impressive and i i, I really enjoyed it and uh, you know if it wasn't i, I treat my art like um drawing drawing on paper it's a step down from canvas. So it would have been really interesting to see how that, how her work compares on canvas to the Mylar. Mylar will provide a bit of a sheen to it and has that kind of slick surface to it. So um, it may be comparing uh, uh, apples to oranges between Mylar and the canvas. But again, I, I really liked her Brush strokes. Uh, she really knows how to move paint around on the surface, and uh, and it was original. It was very original. I had never seen anything quite like that, and that uh, made it a fairly unique thing in the show. So uh, I, my hats off to her. That was worth the price of admission, which was free. But uh, you know. Uh, yeah, that's it. It's that's the one nice thing about going to these shows is you always discover something new. Someone out there is doing something original, 
And again, these the uh, if you're looking for a Christmas gift uh, or a gift of any sort, uh, home home gift, uh, uh, gift to a colleague or a coworker or something like that. I know people get really um, sensitive about art because they think it's so personal, and, and that is true as well. But there's some good stuff like you know there's um, there's some good stuff there for under a thousand dollars and. If it was in a gallery, you know, and some of that stuff was gallery worthy and uh, you would have been lucky to get for under $2,000 or even $5,000. So, you know, um, artist run centers are a great, uh, a great spot for finding some really good art at really fair price. You know, most of these artists are not getting back the the minimum wage hours they put into their pieces. So certainly that was the case with mine. And I know almost all these pieces, uh, the artists spent more hours than they were. Uh, and if they were getting paid at minimum wage, they'd still be uh, selling it at a loss. So that's uh, my review of the thing. I'm, you know, on reflection, it's a good piece. I, I, I It's a solid piece from me. Uh, but I really, since I'm, re I'm returning the figure and portrait, I, you know, it's, it's, it's not where I want it to be. Uh, it needs, uh, I need to work on my breath strokes. Uh, I, I, I need to re-familiarize myself with, uh, creating the figure. So it's, uh, it's all correct. Uh, figure, portrait and figure painting requires a lot of hours of investment so you have to kind of think it's going to be worthwhile to do it to invest the time and uh so and it's been a good number of years since i really sp spent any significant time on the figure or the portrait uh in my practice so uh yeah so i do have some work ahead of me if i plan to make this a feature element in my compositions moving forward. Okay, to next time, take care, all the best.